Hi, I'm Tammy. Welcome to my channel. Today, we are going to be doing these loose watercolor flowers. And I actually took this from a pattern in some of the pool chairs that we have at our community pool. So anyway, come and join me. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Come and paint with me. All right, guys, I'm so excited for this one. I have my filbert brush here, my 100% cotton paper. Use the paper you have though. But because I'm making a video, I wanna use the best for you guys. All right, so just dipping in here to this weird color that's on my palette. It's looking kind of gray. And we're gonna be doing some very light flowers today. I mixed up a little bit of that golden brown color, adding lots of water. So this is really light and spreadable. And we're just going to hold our brush quite loosely and start making some nice petals. Remember guys, I work fast because I encourage you guys to do the same since Working fast helps our brain not to start overthinking all the things. So we are going to make some petal shapes on either side, just flipping the brush over to create some nice rounded shapes. And then you can all make sure that, you can all make sure, you can make sure that all of those petals are pointing back to the center of that flower. So if you want to move your brush around and even when you're doing it upside down, just flip your brush so that the tip, the rounded part is going to be the top of your petal, then do it. You don't have to do it that way, but that's just kind of how I like to make sure that all the petals have the same shape on the top or the tip, but it's really not that important. Okay, so I dipped in to my yellowy color and I'm just adding a wet on wet technique here, adding in that darker saturated color. Let's make some more of this lovely yellow and let's do another petal here on the right side. So I love this brush because it's already giving you that really nice rounded shape. And then I'm going to flip my brush on the side and make some really thin petals as well as using the belly of the brush to make some thicker petals. And so this one, we're keeping it all very light. I didn't flip my brush there. You just kind of do what feels right. And it's like, there's, there's rules for watercolor, but you don't gotta follow them. You do what you wanna do. Do a little bit of um, some marks there at the top. Just create some illusion of fluffiness with our petals. Okay, so adding some more water. Now we're gonna grab some light blue color and I just keep adding lots and lots of water, add more paint as you see fit, what you'd like to accomplish with that. And let's do our third bloom here on the left side. All right, so nice rounded petal. These are getting pretty easy. They're kind of the same type of thing, same situation going on. And flipping my brush and including petals on all the sides. Now, if you want to do some side facing flowers, you might make a couple of the petals on one side really short because of the angle of the flower, or you can do these front facing like I'm doing here. And when you want to add in some of those little fluffy marks, remember just to use the tip of the brush, put it sideways so you're gonna get a thin mark and then just add those in. I just think it looks so, pu so pretty, so fluffy and lovely. All right, some more of this yellow mixture here. I'm just kind of thinking, what shall we do? And I'm sort of painting with a reference, but not, not totally. Using it for inspiration, I took a picture of a beach chair that we have at our pool. It's kind of crazy. Uh, we're just gonna do a nice little, a little pointed petal situation here. And if you want your flower to be wider, bigger, you can extend those petals out. As you can see, I'm just using mostly the tip of that brush to get the really thin marks. And, oh, I just love painting like this where you start adding really, really thin amounts of paint. So then you can start building up your layers, building up your details, and it just ends up being such a fun treat once you're at the end and have everything in, in place. All right, so another one uh, that's yellow here. It's a little bit smaller than some of the other blooms. And if you don't want it to be so small, you can always add in more petals and um, fill it out just a bit. All right, so now I'm gonna use that blue again. Let's do a cute little side facing just to spread some of that blue color around just at the top there. And 
I'll add some more blue. It's a really nice dark one. Let's go ahead and put some of that paint in the middle there. Just allow it to spread around and create a really pretty center. All right, let's do another side-facing bloom here. These are tiny guys. They just fill out your composition really nice. And we're adding in more of that blue, which is going to be a nice pop of color and interest when we have all of these yellowy, um, yellowy blooms around. So some people like to map out where they're going to put their flowers. They like to put the stems right away with each flower or at least sketch out. And I like to just add some of the time and do another one here, a little side facing guy. I like to add my blooms. When I add my blooms first and then connect stems, I find that my my painting feels more natural, more loose, and even more attractive and interesting to the eye, at least in my opinion, because I'm not bogged down at the spacing and trying to figure out exactly where to put everything. When I get too detailed and organized, I feel like that's when I start to lose my creativity. All right, I'm using my number eight round brush. I love this one. This one, I'm trying to get the name right, is a Velvet Touch, I believe. Silver brush, Velvet Touch, something like that. And I love it because, wow, that is an intense teal color here. Well, don't worry, we can always tone it down. Get some cl a clean brush here. Anyway, I like the brush because it's pointy, very pointy. Adding some red is going to desaturate your green, make it less intense, less dark. And now we're gonna have closer to a turquoise color. I'm even mixing in some more green on there. You know, I I just always encourage you guys to use the colors that you love, the colors that you have. Now we're just gonna create some nice stems. I'm not counting how many are there. Just going to kind of arc them so they're not stick straight. And just making sure that pretty much everybody has a stem connecting at some point. And when I make them stick straight, they just don't look as natural. And flowers bend and move with the wind, with the breeze. So you just want to keep that in mind. I definitely need more stems than that. So let's go ahead and add our nice sap green here on the side and just change up the color a little bit. It'll probably be pretty similar, but I definitely need more stems than that. I mean, no one's, I always say no one's gonna be counting them, but you're gonna know. If I only had four stems down there and clearly I have, you know, more than eight blooms, it's a little weird. So just fill that out um, with some nice quick brush strokes. And we're going to be thinking about where we're going to put our foliage as well. Adding in the leaves or even smaller bunches of flowers really make this bouquet come alive, fill it out, make it so fun. Just wanted to add a little bit more blue here. I, I love the contrast of the blue with yellow. It's looking really pretty. Now, blue and orange are contrasting colors, meaning they're the opposite on the color wheel. When you place them next to each other, they make each other pop. They make each other really stand out. So we have a yellow that kind of has some oranginess to it. Not the same as orange, but I'm just feeling this color palette. What do you guys think? I think they're looking really nice together. Okay, so for my leaves, I'm just leaving a little stem and then I'm pressing down the belly, lifting up slow. All right, that's simply what I'm doing here. Sometimes it's hard to know what do I place at the top? You know, what should I add in? What's going to be poking out? And I want to encourage you that I don't always know where I'm going with a painting. Uh, I certainly don't have this all mapped out. The fabric from the beach chair does not have any leaves. Not like this anyway. And all the blooms are pretty much yellow. So I'm just kind of leaving it up to my intuition to figure out what to put down, what to place. I sometimes like to add these little sketchy marks or really quick flicks of the wrist, brush strokes. Um, some artists I've seen that they just like to kind of move the brush and pull it and just let that brush just kind of pull along the color, um, not being too intentional about the shape of the leaves. Right now, I'm just wanting to fill in the space with some of that greenery. Don't forget in between your flowers too, because sometimes if your blooms are a little bit farther apart than you wanted, it can be an issue for you. Okay, so now I've allowed this to dry and we're going to add again with our pointed number eight round brush, some details. It is time for the details. So I'm really excited to try, let's see, a little bit of yellow there. 
and just adding in the center part i just want to put a little bit of color we did not add in some color uh, with the wet on wet technique which is fine um, we can make every bloom a little bit different a little unique and this one is dry as well so we are just going to start with our center i'm going to stipple which is adding tiny little dots to the center of this flower and just making them really uh, pretty saturated actually as you saw i just dipped into my paint well to get that really nice thick and concentrated paint because i want this to show up dark i don't want it to be watery because then a lot of these marks are not going to stand on their own they're going to just kind of flow together let's do a little bit of that beautiful golden yellow maybe it's a yellow ochre it's not called that on my palette or maybe it could be i don't know i have so many palettes and sometimes they all have kind of different names which makes it a little challenging to call out the names so guys i just say the basic colors and let you guys kind of choose the colors that you want to use because that's really what's important to use what you have and not stress over what you don't have because this is art and it's supposed to be fun right i always say that take a deep breath by the way let's talk a little mental health if you are enjoying this also give this a like and make sure to subscribe to my channel hit that bell so that you don't miss out on my videos in the future and guys also i teach watercolor on patreon if you're interested it's a fun way to support this artist but also just uh, three dollars a month or more but also what's great is that you get bonus content and exclusive tutorials not seen anywhere else you can even join the live stream tier or the art prints tier we even have a private chat group so check it out link in in a description all right as you saw there i just started adding a bunch of little lines i'm holding the brush perpendicularly perpendicularly <laughs> pretty much pretty much a vertical hold here and i'm just adding beautiful little thin lines all the way on the outside and then connecting things with little dots as well and this is just going to create some really pretty centers for our flowers and give it some fanciness and pizzazz so back to that taking a deep breath i hope that you can remind yourself the story in your head needs to be something positive so that we can relax into this painting and enjoy this process together i made that center really big i'm thinking that's working wasn't sure i was going to go that big but hey you go as big or small as you want with the centers and just be kind of intuitive about these things it's really up to you and how you're feeling at the time so tiny little brush strokes little lines and then little dots around it's really the same the same pattern here if you wanted to change up the centers go for it you know there are so many different ways that we can paint the middle of a flower and it completely changes the look of what's going on you know with your floors i was thinking of doing a video on this sometime let me know in comments if you would like to see one where we talk about different ways to create the center of flowers and then also the the variation of types of petals and then the number of petals and then the colors when you put together number of petals shapes of petals types of centers and colors my goodness and even textures and patterns that you add on top you're just gonna have so many amazing ideas and types of flowers at your fingertips so guys i'm just adding in some dark brown to the light yellowy brown there in the center this flower is a little different. He's gonna have a little bit of a different center and that's okay. Let's do some little lines coming out from that dark filled in center. All right, this one is dry as well. I always like to check and sometimes if it's not dry, hit it up with a heat gun or a hair dryer, and you're good to go. All right guys, I'm just curious if you have any ideas, other ideas of floral videos you would like to see, let me know in comments. I'm always open to your feedback and curious what you guys want to see uh, right now in my head i've been planning for a while a maybe five part beginner watercolor uh, video series that we could do for youtube and also trying to figure out maybe a freebie that i could create to send out to you guys so anyway if you guys have ideas for that also let me know send me a comment i always want to hear your feedback it really helps me out all right so our centers are looking good they are looking cute, almost spidery, but definitely very, very pretty. 
All right, I'm going to clean off my brush at this point. I feel like the fun part is just to be had now because we're gonna start adding in all the details to make our petals lovely and fancy and beautiful. Now, if you wanted to, you could leave it like this with that first layer of color, but guess what? I ain't going there today. I'm going to do fancy pants because this is just really fun. So we are taking this really pointy number eight round brush. We are doing some scribbly lines and I'm just kind of going around where I'm seeing the various petals. I have a lot of petals on these flowers. So I'm going to make a lot of marks. So some of these marks are going to be really thin and sketchy and scratchy. Some of them might just follow the center of the flower and some of them might be larger strokes if I press, do more pressure and press down with the belly of the brush like that one, you're gonna get a lot of color and marks here. So what I'm trying to go for here, and I've heard artists talk about it in terms of shadows, you're putting the shadowy parts on the flowers and you could think of it that way um, or just maybe adding in some different textures to the petals, maybe the petals are are kind of lacy or flipping or turning in different directions. I just think overall it makes them look so, so good. Now, my main goal here is I want to be random. I want to be asymmetrical. I don't want to have the same types of marks everywhere. Let's go for that blue and work on our lovely blue bloom, blue bloom. So this might feel intimidating and scary and it does sometimes feel like that when you're initially starting to put down the marks, but don't worry. Take a deep breath. Again, what do you do? Remind yourself. <laughs> this is practice. It's supposed to be fun. And then you're just going to have fun with it. So some of the marks I'm going to put on the tips of the petals, just a couple, one, two, two, three, four lines. There I did a long line with a couple uh, short ones. There I did a thick one. So I'm doing some in the center, but I am being very aware of where each petal begins so that we can kind of capture that essence and try to sort of block off, you know, where one petal ends and one begins. That's looking nice. I'm liking that blue one. See how he's just coming alive. He's, he's becoming um, a flower that has personality. Okay. So there I just decided to uh, color in some of that paint. So it spread it around and darkened that entire petal. Again, you know, if you're thinking about shadows, the shadows are not going to be the same in all the petals. And this one here, I'm doing a little bit of a different style, just kind of adding those nice, pretty even brush strokes all the way around. Uh, it's, a, it's a unique bloom and just wanted to capture the essence of that one as well. So I hope you are enjoying this video so far. We are getting quite into the thick of this painting. And if you have any questions for me, let me know. I am always excited to, to hear them and respond to them. Um, I am enjoying this thoroughly. I'm using a medium brown here for this bloom. And it's kind of reminding me of like a wildcat situation. I don't know why. You know, leopard, cheetah, kind of those colorings. Probably also because of the center. And it just, I don't know why. It looks like a wildcat to me. Okay, so if this is going really fast, slow it down, pause it, uh, and just take your time. I would encourage you to even practice this a few times, maybe even before, um, if you're not painting with me now, maybe even before you do a full painting so that you can sort of get the hang of it and the feeling of how you'd like to uh, go about painting all this. All right, let's get some more of that dark brown color. I don't usually paint flowers brown, but I thought it might be kind of fun because, again, the reference photo I took had yellow flowers. They were all yellow. And if you did yellow lines, uh, the top right one here, we have a good contrast between the first layer and the second so we can see it. But with yellow flowers, it can be hard to have enough contrast. So brown I thought would be kind of fun to try. All right, so those little sketchy marks here and there. And I always have a paper towel or a washcloth so that I can dab my brush. After dipping in the wet paint, sometimes the, there's just too much liquid on your brush. If you come into this painting with too much liquid, 
your lines are going to flow together and you're not going to have these individual marks left over. You're going to have a painting that's way too wet and all that color is just going to become one, pretty much one blob. So why did I choose to do pink here? I I just felt like there's a lot of kind of neutral colors happening and it's kind of a nice contrast. So I'm doing a lot of pink or kind of left with a flower that looks mostly pink and just changing it up a little bit. I'm just taking a clean damp brush here and removing some of those marks, removing some of that paint just to lighten it up a little bit. That's called lifting color and it's a wonderful handy handy trick if you ever find yourself in a space where a mark is just too dark and you want to lighten that up. Sometimes you can even remove all the paint depending on if your colors are staining. If they're non-staining then you can lift lift away all right adding more saturated brown over the top of those marks i put in so now we have three values we have a really light first base wash that we did and then we added the medium brown color for the markings and then the really dark brown colors where i just dipped my paintbrush into saturated paint just like i'm doing with this one this one's really coming alive so you've got some really intense shadows there I'm not being as um, as um, generous this time because I don't want to cover that medium value. I just want to do a little bit of the dark. The dark is really intense. All right, let's add a little bit of orange here for this for this guy, especially in the center. It's kind of starting to look like a sunflower in a way, more just the colorings and the center. But anyway, giving a little bit more contrast. Of course, we're going to hit up the blue ones. And we're doing that really, really dark blue. I love how the this idea of doing light, medium, and dark values for anything helps for that three-dimensional look. It just helps things to pop off the page and gives a lot of contrast, a lot of beauty here. So I don't want to go overboard with this one. This one is really fun. Can I say any more about this brush? This brush is fantastic. Hope you guys pick up a... It's not a velvet touch, I keep saying that, but it is a silver brush, a velvet, silver brush, black velvet, there we go. All right, if you want that really dark value after you've added your really light value of that color with so much water, then adding a little more paint in, then finally wet brush, dipping straight up into your paint well, you're gonna get a very saturated color and you don't even have to mix it first on your palette which is easy peasy. This one, I am mixing it. I didn't want it to be too dark. Yeah, that's looking good. So a few more little scratchy marks here, just a little bit. We did a lot for that medium value and I just wanna add a tiny bit more contrast. A little bit of sketchiness. Whatever type of marks you feel are gonna look good is what you should use. <laughs> All right, just a little bit more water. Sometimes you can soften up some of those edges when you add just a little bit of fresh, clean water and you lightly scrub over a couple times. Okay, so now I've got my sap green. I'm going to mix that up on my palette and we're just going to add some pretty contrasting blobs of color. Same thing for the leaves. I mean, our leaves are looking really flat and you can paint with one layer. No worries, no problem. But you're gonna find more issues with uh, three-dimensionalness. Would that be correct? Feel free to correct me below. <laughs> with three-dimensionality, I'm just gonna make up stuff now. All right, see how quickly I'm adding in that color? Just brushing it out, easy peasy, no worries. If you want to add some more green, like I'm doing here, you can even just dab your brush that has some green paint and then dab it on a paper towel and you're just gonna get a cute uh, dry brush effect. All right, a little bit more blue because we didn't add contrast to our side facing flowers. We don't wanna forget about them. They are sort of just lost in the background here. But once we added a few more dark marks, which I think we're just gonna do this second layer, I think that'll be sufficient. And they're not focal points at all. They're just those you know filler background flowers. So we don't need to babysit them too much and give them too much attention. 
one other thing I'd like to do before we are done is add in just a little bit of that stem right here on our downward facing flower. Sometimes you can see a little bit of that green and then a tiny little stem there just connecting so that it has an anchor point. And there we have it, guys. Thank you so much for being here and painting with me. I hope you learned some things. Let me know in comments if you have any questions or what you'd like to paint next time.